All right, welcome, welcome, welcome everyone to the Level Up Small Business Program Presentation Night. So let's all celebrate, woohoo, because we have made it to yet another culmination of this awesome, awesome program. So these dynamic entrepreneurs have toughed it out for the past six weeks, um, and they have been working rigorously on all things their business, right? We all know that entrepreneurship can be tough. We know that entrepreneurship can be a challenge, and so this program does not fall short of that in any way, shape, or form. So we are so grateful to be here for yet another celebration of entrepreneurs as they continue to move forward in their journey and their vision of pursuing their business dreams. So my name is Darlisa Diltz. I'm the Managing Director of the North Texas Entrepreneur Education and Training Center, where we do exactly this. We provide an educational platform for entrepreneurs to grow and succeed in their business. We are so happy for the partnership opportunity with the Center for Transforming Lives to be able to connect all of you guys together and allow you the opportunity to not only grow in your business, but connect you to other entrepreneurs that are in the same boat as you. Um, because it's no fun to do it alone. So creating a cohort of collaborative minds is what we aim to do. So without further ado, what I would like to do is I would like to turn it over to Miss Ocelia Sproul to introduce herself. And she's going to um, open it up to her team. And then we will get started with these amazing presentations. Ocelia, the floor is yours, my dear. All right, sorry, just <laughs> uh, I was trying to let a help another uh, entrepreneur get logged in. Uh, so welcome everyone. Uh, my name is Ocelia Sproul. I am the Micro Enterprise Program Coordinator uh, for the Center for Transforming Lives. So we are thrilled to present our, this is our fourth cohort uh, of our Level Up Enterprise program. So tonight we have a lot of great presentations. Uh, we have a wide range of different industries that are represented. So it has just been a wonderful on behalf of CTL to see the progress of our business owners in this program. So we are excited to see uh, what they present tonight and to show the hard work that they have put into developing and building their business. Thank you, Ocelia. So as part of this program, the entrepreneurs have to do a couple different things. Well, a few different things. So um, they go through a pre-session to ensure that they are ready for the level of um, education that is provided. Once they have kind of graduated that, then they go into another session, um, which provides a little bit of orientation, gives them founding and background backup and coverage. And then they have to do what are called learning labs. And the learning labs is what we at the uh, North Texas Entrepreneur Training Center help them with. Um, they also have financial coaching. So I want to give Miss Marcel some time to say hello, introduce herself, um, and tell you a little bit about what she does with the entrepreneurs. Good evening. I'm Marcel McClure. I'm a financial coach here at the Center for Transforming Lives. I've been here almost seven years. And one of the many things that we do is that we go through budgeting. Um, because it's important that an entrepreneur is financially stable personally before they start adventuring out into another business. And so um, we go through goal setting, we go through budgeting, we go for, through credit building um, and touch on each one of those subjects and more than anything, concentrate on the goals that they have set before them. Thanks, Darlisa. 
Awesome. Thank you. And thank you for all that you do. All right. And so as another layer to what they do, they get mentoring. Um, so we do have another partner, um, Red Development Group, that actually works with them one-on-one -on -one so that they can kind of hone in on some of the tools and um, things that they talk about throughout the program. So they are wrapped and packed and positioned with lots of care through this program. So what I'd like to do for all of our nine presenters, I'd like to open up the floor and allow you to introduce yourself and tell us who you are so we can know who you amazing shining faces are. So um, we'll start with Tyler. Perfect. Thank you so much. Um, hi, everybody. My name is Tyler Grant. I am uh, working in development at Center for Transforming Lives, and I'm just here to cheer y'all on and listen to your stories. And uh, just want to say thank you so much for letting me be here and hear more about what you're doing. Congratulations to everybody who was presenting tonight. Thank you. Thank you so much, Tyler. Miss Petrina, is that Petrina? Katrina Bonnick Higgins with the Center for Transforming Lives. I'm the newest member of the Economic Mobility Service Department with this amazing team that's already glowing on this. They'll all introduce themselves. I am the career coach, and I am so excited to learn about all of your business ventures. Looking forward to hearing from each of you and, again, learning and um, growing with you. Thank you. Thank you so much. And Katrina. Hi everyone, I'm Katrina McKee. I am the Economic Mobility Program Assistant. Um, thank you all for inviting me. I'm looking forward to hearing about your business ventures and what you all have come up with. And congratulations again. Thank you, Katrina. Ms. Charletra. Hello, everyone. So excited and anxious to hear the presentations on this evening. I'm Charlotte Sharp, Director for Economic Mobility, and we are um, blessed to be able to partner with North Texas Entrepreneur and Education Training Center, and as well as Red Development, as well as the entrepreneurs who are all a part of this cohort. So super excited um, to hear from you all and even see the progress of those who were in the prep program that now has transitioned into the enterprise program. Thank you, Darlisa. Thank you, Charletra. So my screen kind of toggled on me. So I think we have, is it Tiva? Yes, hi, I'm Tiva Pegues and I am the Economic Mobility Program Coordinator with CTL. Um, I'm looking forward to hearing everyone's business adventures and um, just here to reach you out on and good luck to you all. Awesome. Thank you guys so much again for being on. So we are streaming this as well. So as you have your uh, presentations, you may get questions that will come in from the streaming world. So it, you know, I always encourage everyone that is here with us on the screen, please prepare your questions, you know, ask them, pull them, um, pull them in. Um, because we want them to be confident in their businesses. Um, so without further ado, we are going to go ahead and get things kicked off. And our first entrepreneur that we have, we're going to have Miss Chastity Champion. Chastity, are you ready for your time in the spotlight? Yes. <laughs> Yes, hold on just a moment. I'm going to get my presentation up. Um, can I share my screen? Yes, ma'am. You should be able to. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Good evening. My name is Chastity Champion. I am the CEO of the EA Accelerator. And let me make sure my PowerPoint is working. Um, I have 15 years of experience as an administrative professional and let me go through my presentation. I am also the, um, a 2021 Strategic Partnership Admin Award nominee. 
really hope I win. Nominations will close on August 16th. So very excited about that accomplishment in the administrative professional world. So my mission as an EA coach would be to help executives and assistants understand the combined value they bring to their organizations through the power of self-awareness. Um, before being an EA coach, I was a telecommunications employee. I worked for AT&T Communications for eight years. After that, I went on to um, homeschool my three children um, as a single mother from fifth grade through graduation. And um, during that time, I started in a virtual assistant business and I currently work and start, I started a virtual assistant business so that I could support my family. And during that time, I went on to work for um, remote companies as an administrative professional, um, starting in a part-time role as a scheduling assistant for the president of Texas Homeschool Coalition. Um, currently, I work as an executive assistant for a leadership consultancy here in Fort Worth. So um, I, that meant I, I have a typo that's what motivated me to start the EA Accelerator. Um, simply put, uh, training and development opportunities for support staff were often overlooked and the program content was not relevant to me as an administrative professional. And um, over time, I also realized that many executives and small business owners had a difficult time locating business support staff professionals that complemented their specific needs. So what I offer to clients is an honest approach to solving their executive assistant needs. Um, one of the most vital relationships in today's organizations occurs between a senior level executive or a business owner and their assistant. So we partner with executive teams and small business owners to identify quality candidates and set realistic guidelines for success. Um, I also offer expert advice. So in addition to 15 years of being an administrative professional, um, our company relies on research-backed assessments and ongoing professional development and certification opportunities to stay abreast of employee performance insights. And lastly, we offer real results. Our programs are customized based on specific strengths and weaknesses of the executive and their assistant instead of using a cookie cutter, one-stop shop approach to candidate matching development and coaching or mentoring services. So why partner with the EA Accelerator? Um, because game-changing partnerships don't just happen. Um, a lot of times when an executive is put with an assist, uh, when an executive receives an assistant or vice versa, a, an, an assistant goes to work for a company, they're usually onboarded and there's a trial and error or a forming period where they have to learn to get to know each other. But our goal is to eliminate a lot of that, um, um, the forming stage and to help executives and assistants build a strong communication plan from day one. I believe that an executive and their assistant can accomplish more together than either of them can accomplish on their own. And also we provide support every step of the way. Um, okay, I have to. So the first path to working with the EA Accelerator is I need help finding an assistant. So what this looks like is an executive may contact us and say, hey, we need help um, finding an assistant. So during what we call a discovery phase, there's or a critical attributes session, we'll sit down and discuss your unique administrative and organizational needs. So um, sometimes, uh, well, to gain a clear and unbiased um, perspective, we usually recommend having two to three people participate in what's called a job benchmarking process. And during the benchmark, we will identify three to five critical attributes that a person would need to possess to elevate executive performance, bring value to the organization, and to be successful in this role. Um, path two would be accelerating the performance of your EA. Um, it, is it is a proven fact that the first 90 days on the job are by far the hardest for any employee, regardless of their um, company, industry, et cetera. A person usually decides how long they will remain with an organization based on how easy it is to get acclimated with the company, 
and the quality of training they will receive in the first 90 days. So our EA Accelerator program allows us to sit down with both an executive and an EA to identify and strategize a plan for maximizing day-to-day -day communication, setting up an onboarding plan that will help them speed up, get up to speed quickly with essential operations, systems, et cetera, and also to develop a 90-day coaching program that will increase confidence and trust for both the, the executive and their new strategic business partner, which is their EA. And path three would be, I need ongoing support to hone my skills as an administrative professional. And for, and this is program is usually designed for existing assistance. And then of course we just offer 90 day coaching, coaching packages. Um, Self-awareness is one of the highest forms of empowerment for today's professional, and that's quoted by me. So let's talk. I'm done. All right, amazing job. Let's give Chastity a round of applause. Thank you so much, Chastity, for your presentation today. Um, so. Let's open it up for questions from Ms. Chastity. While you guys get your questions ready, I will go to Internet World and see if we have any questions there. I do have a question. Does anyone have a question in uh, Zoom World? I don't have a question, but I just want to say I love the visuals that you shared with um, the, uh, as your backgrounds of all of your content. That was really, um, I think it added a lot uh, and early elevated your presentation. So well done and um, it was all very well thought out. So great job. Thank I you. I agree, awesome presentation. So Chastity, the question that came from Zoom land, is your program virtual or is this something you are considering offering is this something that you are considering offering? That's the question. So for Dallas-Fort Worth, it is a hybrid program. So both in-person and virtual, but anything outside of Dallas-Fort Worth, it would be virtual only. Awesome, thank you. Any other questions for Ms. Chastity? So Chastity, what was something that you gained out of the Level Up program? Definitely. Um, I had to think through a lot of the foundational groundwork as far as looking over a competitive, looking at my competition, also seeing where my value prop, what my value proposition is, um, and making sure that I um, just really focus on the foundational principles because you can have an idea, um, but if it's not strong or relevant to a market, then it's, it's just basically that an idea. So I really, I really had to do a lot of research that to make sure this was a viable service that I could offer. Not just an idea in my head. <laughs> awesome. Well, thank you so much. Um, so uh, Charlotte has a question and it says, this is a great resource for corporations. Oh, hello. All right, hold on. Let me see what we got here. Charletra, you want to ask your question? Or somebody? Sure, hold on. Yes, I'll ask it. Um, so um, I think this is an awesome business idea um, and would be really beneficial to a number of corporations. Do you have certain business types um, that you plan to target? And then my second question, which I can ask again after you answer that first one, but the second one is, how do you evaluate the success of your work with the executive assistants? Yes, thank you for asking. So to be honest, I just focus mostly on relationships between an executive and their assistant or it's, so it can go both ways with small businesses or corporations because what we, what I've just discovered is that challenge, which is to get a two people aligned there's no parameters on what that looks like for either, you know, because I've worked for a, a nonprofit 
but right now I work for a small business and those challenges existed when I worked for a nonprofit as well as when I work for a small business. And even when we work, when I worked for a larger corporation. So no, um, I don't target certain businesses. And then to answer your question on um, evaluating the success of the work with the EA. So in the 90 day coaching program, we said, um, program goals and there's gonna there's an element where the executive sets um, guidelines and then the assistant will set their own performance guidelines and at the end of the program you would rate yourself um, and then the executive would have a lot of influence over um, just performance because they'll be the determining factor on how successful that program was just based on their experience with their with their executive assistant. Thank you so much, Charlotte, Char and thank you, Ms. Chastity. Let's give Chastity another round of applause for her amazing presentation. All right, so we are going to keep this party going. And next we will have Ms. Jenny Finley with Big Mama Sweet Shop. Ms. Jenny, the floor is yours. Okay, now if I can get the butterflies out of my tummy. <laughs> I was okay till we started. <laughs> Girl, so tell let me me share my screen. Make sure this all works. Can everybody see that okay? Okay. So let me see if I can see my part of it. Just a second. move you all someplace else so I can see my notes. Okay, so uh, good evening and welcome to Big Mama's Sweet Shop. This is a stand-in logo that I'm using tonight that a very special friend created for me um, and I really love it but unfortunately I can't use it publicly because the Bitmoji is owned by Facebook but I'm working on my own personal logo but for tonight I was just using this one. So this is our story about how Big Mama's Sweet Shop came to be. Last year around Christmas time, I decided to make hot cocoa bombs to give to my coworkers as Christmas gifts. And while I was working on this project, my husband said, hey, can you make some for me to give to some of my coworkers? So I did. And as we handed these out, everybody oohed and awed and was just really impressed with them and wanted to know if we were selling them. So of course we said no, because that was not part of what, we, what the game plan was. So I thought about it for a few weeks and I had a friend who had been talking to me about, you know, you really ought to think about starting a bakery business because you're really good at this. So when my kids were up for Christmas, we talked about it and Big Mama Sweet Shop was born. So uh, my mission statement and my vision are basically just, I wanna provide customers with a great tasting, good quality product that they feel good about and feel good about feeding their families. Hey, Jenny, I don't yes. mean to stop you, but are you advancing slides? Yes, I am. I am so sorry. That's okay. okay, there we go. <laughs> Y'all want me to start over or? <laughs> no, this is good. This is good, okay. So we still just see this, the Big Mama Sweet Shop slide. Okay. There we go, all right. Okay, so sorry guys. Okay, so my mission statement and vision are that I wanna provide customers with a great tasting, good quality product that they feel good about and feel good about feeding to their families. So busy moms need and want items made from fresh, good quality ingredients that don't contain a lot of preservatives. And they look for products that are unique and made to order. And they want items that are a good value. You know, everybody wants to get the most for their money. Big Mama's Sweet Shop can give them all of that and more. So this is my value proposition. And in working with Colette, we decided that I'm going to focus on three main products to get started. And those are hot cocoa bombs, gourmet style cookies, and cupcakes. 
hot cocoa bombs make this decadent, wonderful mug of hot chocolate. Gourmet cookies are really big and thick and just scrumptious. And the cupcakes are delicate and moist and just melt in your mouth. So part of one of the things that we were asked to do in the Level Up program was to kind of do a comparison with other businesses that are similar to what we're doing. So this is kind of my spreadsheet, if you will, my diagram of doing that. So Divalicious um, has been in business for a really long time and she's professionally trained, but she has a lot of items on her menu. And I wonder if so many items might kind of be a little bit of a problem. Lulu Pops has two products on their menu, cake pops and macaroons, that's it. And several months ago, <clears throat> excuse me, several months ago, I wanted to try one of their cake pops because they're always doing specials and I didn't think it tasted all that great. Um, but because she only offers two products, what happens if the cake pop uh, fad dies? She's lost half of what her menu is. Um, Taylor Made Treats is also a home-based bakery much like mine, she's been in business for a while, so she's got that established customer base. She focuses on custom cakes and gourmet flavor cupcakes. And then Cineholics is kind of new to our area, and I've heard so much about it that a few weeks ago, I talked my husband into going in there and is trying out this famous cinnamon roll, or at least that's what their marketing says, and we weren't impressed. Um, they have so many frosting flavors and topping choices that it was really hard to make a decision about, well, what do we want? What do we want this to look like? And you could really just get so much that it was, uh, some of the pictures just were not at all appealing to me. So Big Mama's Sweet Shop, I feel like can kind of fill in the gaps in between what these similar businesses offer. I too have a lot of baking experience. When my son was a child, I made all his birthday cakes and a lot of his friends' moms would ask me to make kid, uh, cakes for their kids' birthdays as well. Um, um, focusing on just a few items for now to get started, but I have ideas for lots of other things that I wanna do, including seasonal items that it would rotate in and out of my menu. I'm offering hot cocoa bombs, which are still new to a lot of people and people love these things. I'm close by and in the neighborhood and my current customer base, small that it is, personally knows either me or my husband. So those are some of the pluses that I think we can bring to this. Uh, I have a defined target consumer thanks to this program and Colette. My sales and marketing strategies are primarily ideas of ways I want to promote my business. And right now, most of these are still works in progress. My business partners are pretty set for right now, and I am still working on other possibilities for revenue streams. So how am I going to get the word out? How am I going to, uh, to let people know about this? Well, right now, I am solely relying on word of mouth. Working on a web page, but it's not quite there. I want to get business cards to attach to every order that leaves my bakery, as well as have to hand out when I'm talking to people. And I am working on different types of specials that I can offer at the holidays and other times. So this is my team. Um, I'm the owner and the managing partner. My husband does most of the grocery shopping and he helps with cleanup. He's also great about going with me to run errands and shop for those non-consumable things. My son is an investor in the business and he also helps me with business decisions. He originally planned to be a silent partner, but his role is much bigger than that. And my daughter-in-law is great about finding ideas on Pinterest of things that we might try to do or to, to replicate. And she's also really good about letting me know when teachers and parents might be needing treats or snacks for class parties or class projects. 
So how am I going to entice people to try my bakery items? Well, these are some ideas that I came up with. Um, one that I have started implementing that I think is, is working really well is asking people to taste test new, new recipes for me. Um, they get free product, okay? And I let them know that I really need their feedback and that seems to help. Anything to do with hot cocoa bombs is awesome at this point. Um, maybe someday again, we'll have winter where it'd be cold enough where you can really enjoy a cup of hot chocolate. Um, and I'm working on specials, um, you know, uh, like buy five cupcakes, get one free. And I saw something recently in a Facebook group that I'm on about doing Advent hot cocoa bombs instead of the 12 days of Christmas, Advent is before Christmas, 12 days of Christmas is after Christmas. And somebody had a packaging idea where they offered a 12 pack of hot cocoa bombs and then they had a special one that was different that they got to enjoy on Christmas day. So these are some of the ideas I'm working on, some of the ideas that I've come up with in going through this program. Um, I, I've learned a lot in these sessions. Mostly I've learned that I didn't know nearly as much as I thought I did. Um, I am still very much in the startup phase and I would greatly appreciate any suggestions or feedback that you guys have for me. Woohoo! All right, thank you. You, Jenny, let's give Jenny a round of applause. All right, so I'm ready for the hot cocoa ball. <laughs> right? Um, hot chocolate cocoa bombs, like those are great. Um, so um, let's open it up for those questions for Miss Jenny. I do have two questions that um, came from the streaming audience, but of course, I'd like to give you guys first dibs. So we have questions from Ms. Charlotte. The questions say, do you plan to sell vegan items? Are you participating in any pop-up shops or farmer's markets? Um, I, at this time, I'm not planning to sell vegan items. Um, there's a lot of special things that you have to do for that and, and special recipes and that so I'm not planning to that to do that at this time. However, if there if I get a lot of requests for it, is certainly something that I'm willing to look into and try to learn how to do. I am not currently participating in any pop up shops or farmers market things, but I am interested in doing that. I just have not had time, quite honestly, to try to look for those to do. And you have to do a lot of prep to be able to do those because you have to have items. Uh, made up uh, individually prepackaged and ready to sell. There's a lot of prep to get ready for one of those. So I'm, I'm not there yet, but I'm certainly interested in doing something like that. Awesome, thank you. So I'm gonna go with one of the questions that are um, on the stream. And it says, you mentioned doing seasonal items. What are some of those seasonal items that you're thinking of? Well, it would be um, like hot cocoa bombs to me is seasonal because that's a cold weather thing. And honestly, the, the chocolate would not hold up in this heat. I wouldn't be able to make them right now because the heat, they wouldn't hold up. Um, so that's a seasonal item because it's a cold weather item. But other things would be like um, doing like graduation cookies around the end of May for graduation, doing uh, cookies and things that are decorated seasonally. Uh, St. Patrick's Day, I did Easter stuff this year. Um, cookies, hot cocoa bombs, bunny butt cupcakes. I had a whole menu. Um, so things like that, when I say seasonal, um, it could be things that are in and out. It could be things that are just decorated or cookie shapes that go with whatever time of year or season that, that we're in. Awesome. So um, final question we'll take from here and I will make sure that the other ones are answered. Um, in the chat box. How are you marketing your health and safety practices, especially with concerns related to COVID? Um, health and safety practices, I do have a food handlers permit. 
and um, make sure that my hands are clean, make sure that nothing else is going on in my kitchen um, when I'm in there doing bakery stuff. Um, I think I'm gonna have to create a sign that I post um, on the, the doorway between the living room and the kitchen because my husband just walks in and is like, bakery, you can't do that right now, go away. <laughs> Um, but, you know, following the, the guidelines and the procedures that are outlined in um, the food handlers uh, class that I took, as well as uh, no contact or minimal contact, um, people um, frequently come to me to pick up their items and to make sure that I'm handing them things and we're, we're not physically touching. Awesome. Thank you so much. All right, Mr. Thank you so much. Let's give Miss Ginny a round of applause. Thank you so much. Awesome presentation. All right, um, Mr. Michael, are you ready? I am. We only see the top of your head again. And I actually, uh, that name on the screen is my wife's name. I actually had to come in under her email. Uh, for some reason, none of, the, none of the links that I had would allow me in. So I found with the link that uh, Ophelia gave me, uh, I used it and came in on her, her email and it worked. I got you covered. Boom. All right. Okay. Um, I. I'm going to read the, the presentation from the printout that I have here because I don't have, I'm not in the link, so you can't see what I have, but I uploaded it to the drive, so it's there. Um, <clears throat> again, good evening, everybody. This is Michael Stiff with Stiff's Five Star Energy Conservation Services, and this is my business plan presentation. Um, I start, I'm starting this off with the mission statement again. This is the Five Star Energy Conservation Service was created to provide a quality installation of proven methodologies for homeowners and small businesses to allow customers to the opportunity to save money on their utility bills, along with making a difference in their indoor air quality by removing harmful contaminants. And this, this process is one of the things that we do every, in every house that we go in. We run those tests, we run those digital printouts that, that has manometers that gives digital readings to the, to the staff so they have an idea on how air or how leaky the house is when we go inside. That's done for the air infiltration process and also the duck efficiency. Those, those two processes are the two main uh, processes that are done inside of a house when we go in to treat a house for, uh, to try to help a homeowner or a customer um, in their efforts to reduce their energy bills. Um, there's other things that are done uh, as to, to aid that um, with air infiltration, wall air insulation, uh, radiant barrier in the attic. Those things are some of the things that we do. Um, <clears throat> the primary goal, again, is for Stiff's Five Star Energy Conservation Service to work to maximize every home and business in energy efficiency by lowering energy costs through several proven methods. Um, we offer top quality products and we have a yes, great service for the homeowner. One of the things that happen when you, you're inside doing this, there's a, a process to go through to eliminate um, the, the, the house or to qualify the house and make sure that there's no uh, extra leakage or extra uh, leakage to the outside. Uh, there's no broken windows. There's no missing doors. There's no dog doors or animal doors that allow them to get into the in and out the property. Now those, those particular things will allow the house to be more uh, leaky and airy and, and won't be able to comply to the testing that we would do once inside the house. Um, the opportunity, uh, I identified areas of growth, the opportunity to increase market share, obviously. The new governmental legislations here in Texas will create new opportunities because of all the things that we had, the problem with the grids, uh, the maintenance would also uh, offer an opportunity for us to uh, generate 
business and to acquire new partnerships with HVAC companies and carpet companies. Um, the business concept is one that summarizes key technology concepts and strategies based on the business. Um, we use the, the technology, we use infrared cameras, uh, blower door testers with manometers that will give you the, the digital readings, duct blaster machines that would also, with manometers, gives you another reading that tells you how airy leaky the duct is, the inside or outside of the house, uh, roller brush vent cleaning machines with video equipment. These are, these are three of the major equipments that we use, a machine that we use once we are inside of an individual house or a customer or a small business that gives us a um, leg up on the property and uh, on the work that we're doing inside of the property. The, the, the infrared camera probably is the most uh, instrumental part of that process. Um, it's, a, it's our way of cheating a little bit, cheating the process, uh, saving time once we're inside of the property because infrared camera has pixels and, and readings that will give, we cite the property once we're there and it gives us an idea of kind of a, uh, uh, I guess a, a, a clue or where the house or where the business is losing energy. And once we do that, we print out, we give a printout to the homeowner indicating where the house is leaking, what spots, if the ducts are leaking, if there's holes in the attic, if there's, you know, part of the suffix that's not sealed, that infrared camera will give us an indicator on actually if it's red or green, meaning hot or, you know, air coming in or outside. Um, the concept behind this process is the air throughput in the house, the heating or cooling is that is generated by the air handler. We, you know, a lot of the new home builds now are trying to have zero uh, tight hair, uh, air tightness inside of the house. That means they want to have zero leakage to the outside. Now there are there aren't very many, uh, uh, not not custom built, but normal built homes or you know stock built homes that are zero uh, air tightness. So there's always uh, opportunity for us to come in and do, uh, you know our, you know air infiltrations or duct uh, efficiency to find out if the house is losing air to the outside. Um, some home builders have different levels of, of, of tightness, um, and there's been some there's some variations based in new builds that has uh, they're not as tight and properly sealed as normal houses. Um, this process we we mainly administer our service to ready built homes already existing in the area, homes that are already uh, established uh, had you know, the duration of the weather and, and had some, um, you know, uh, usage from living and, and other things inside of the house. So, and the strategy um, in this process, the strategy is to reduce, conserve, and those two processes right there will equal or actually help lower the energy bill. The resource required. <laughs> Here's a list of the following resources that uh, is needed to do this operation in it. probably every house that you go in. There's some houses that are different based on that, whether it's gas house, electric house, or heat pump home. Um, those are the three type of homes that we encounter once we start doing our work inside of the house. Um, we personnel wise, we need two techs and two helpers. Uh, the techs are the guys that are concentrating on running the blower door machine or the duct blaster machine that gives the readings on how leaky or area the house is. Um, the service that we offer once we're inside of an individual house and doing work in, in that house is air infiltration. And that air infiltration, uh, you know, curtails of different processes, uh, weather stripping. The, the very first thing done is obviously the blower door testing which is a apparatus that is strapped to the door that get, has a fan attached to it that measures the air on the inside of the house. And that machine will give us a digital readout, which gives us, again, an idea of where we are in the process, how much work has got to be done, how long we're inside of that house. 
duck efficiency, which is the blower door testing, um, that we pressurized the ducts uh, once we inside with a with the fan and the, the duct blaster, which gives a pressurized the, the, the ducts that gives an idea to check to see if there's a leakage in the attic. Uh, duct sealant, and that happens and occurs once we find out the leakage to, from the ducts, if there's leakage, collium, plenium, just whatever is leaking up in the attic. And then we add attic insulation, which is based off the programs that we participate in, everything is, is insulated to an R30 level, which is about a foot of insulation in the attic. Uh, those are existing homes. Some new build homes have different levels, but these, these existing homes are always insulated to an R30 uh, value. That is what the uh, EPA and the, the, the Department of Energy requires. Um, <clears throat> also, we offer duct cleaning services, uh, which you know cleans and uh, scrub the, the ducts to make sure there's no allergens or uh, contaminants, contaminants that are inside of the ducts. Also, with that process, we offer video uh, inspection, and we offer microbial and a derodorizer for smelly or ducts that contain bacteria. And then last but least, we offer dryer vent cleaning, which eliminates uh, homes that have built up inside the ducts for vents and, and, and cleaning with, you know, which will, you know, fire hazard. Market summary. Um, we summarized the market in the past, present. Hi, Michael. Sorry, we have to cut you off. You're at your seven minutes. I'll unmute you now. <laughs> um, sorry, you can unmute yourself again. So I apologize, but we do have to cut you off because you're after your seven minutes. But let's give Michael a round of applause. For his presentation. I don't know about you guys, but that sounds like some really awesome type stuff. So I know I have questions. Um, one of the questions that came from uh, the social platform was, how did you get connected with doing this line of work? Well, the, the connection started with uh, the uh, weatherization programs inside the inner city. Um, when it started, when uh, the, one of the previous presidents um, had these inner city programs and he, his, he was focusing on uh, making sure that the homes inside the inner city was energy efficient. And we uh, took a class for that program. And as we were in that particular class, there were also some people there with the local utility company and provider, which was Encore. And they were doing this for their program. And I decided that this was something that I wanted to get in and I, I chose to attack. Awesome, thank you so much. And there's a question, are your services limited to residential facilities? Uh, no, it's not. Uh, I offer this service for small businesses, something strip malls, uh, the small shop area that um, we, don't, we don't do uh, high rises or anything of that nature, but small businesses. Awesome. Thank you so much, Michael. Let's give Michael a round of applause again for his amazing presentation tonight. Um, we never get to see Michael. He's on every single night, but he hides from us. Um, <laughs> but <laughs> That's an awesome job, Michael. Thank you so much. All right, Miss Kiana, you are up, my dear. The floor is yours. Hello. I need to share my screen. Um, how would I do that? <laughs> uh, very bottom, there's a green button, and you would just hit share screen, and it should pop up for you. Okay. So my business is called Reels and Shutters, and my name is Kiana. I took all the pictures on my slideshow, in case anyone's wondering. 
So my name is Kiana. I'm the founder and CEO of Reels and Shutters Studios right here in DFW, Texas. Originally, I was only taking photos here in Fort Worth, but I've extended to Dallas as of about a month ago, and it's been pretty exciting. So in high school, I studied art as a hobby, and then after graduating, I decided to kind of pursue photography and graphic design full time. And for the past three years, I've had the opportunity to build my business, Reels and Shutters, from the ground up. So a little about my business. I provide fun, imaginative, and eclectic images for your business. Many professionals struggle to keep their audiences engaged with their personal brand. And as a result, they lack growth and a client relationship that helps their business grow and thrive. But with fresh photos, a killer color scheme, and visually appealing templates, you can turn your basic social media profile into an immersive and personal experience that will get you the online traffic you, your business needs. So before embarking on making this business, I used to be a preschool teacher. And throughout high school, I studied art. So going into teaching was way outside of what I actually wanted to do with my life. I actually, I truly love making beautiful things and making people feel confident around me. And at the core of my endeavor, I am an artist and I just wanna be able to create things. Within the context of marketing, many business owners stop at wanting just headshots for their web pages or social medias. But if you dive deeper into online marketing, and what appeals to the general audience. Consumers want to see visually appearing, appealing graphics and pictures that tell stories. On top of visuals, learning about trends and relevant content can get tricky for a lot of people, especially with how quickly trends change. That is where Reels and Shutters jumps in to fill in the gap so you won't have to. So currently I have two packages for my business and three for my personal, for people's personal use. I am working on upgrading my packages soon to include video and online templates. After deciding on a package, this is kind of my process when people hire me. After deciding on what package you want to have, I will schedule a Zoom call where we will discuss the goal of your shoot, outfit suggestions, locations, et cetera. From there, you will turn in a retainer fee and then a date schedule. Photo shoots can last about one to two hours depending on your location and video shoots tend to stretch about four hours. I always have my assistant on location with me to help with equipment and making the client feel at ease during shoots. After each shoot, the rest of your payment is to be paid in full and typically you can expect your gallery within seven to 10 days. When going into the program, I really didn't know what to expect. I only knew that I loved taking pictures and meeting people. But going through Level Up taught me about all the discipline that it takes to turn my passion into revenue. I had an opportunity to dive into my financial habits with Ms. Marcille and know where I needed to cut back and where I needed to invest. And Ms. Colette taught me how to step up on my licenses so that I could be taken as a serious professional. And I was able to hear so many different perspectives from my cohort, which was encouraging for me as a newbie. It was far from easy, but now I have a better idea of how to level up from hobbyist to pro create a professional. I don't know why I said hobby is wrong. And that's it. it was, I had a pretty short little presentation. All right, that was amazing. So let's give Kiana a round of applause. That was amazing. All right, so do we have any questions for Miss Kiana? I have a question. What made you decide to expand to not just Fort Worth, but to the Fort Worth side of town as well? Um, I decided to extend out of Fort Worth just because a lot of, there's there are people here in Fort Worth that I've met, but I've been meeting a lot more people that are in Dallas and there's a lot more cooler locations outside in Dallas. So I feel like I just kind of want to expand out of just this little, city that I kind of lived in all my life and go to where I feel like there's more opportunity. Awesome. There's definitely lots and lots of opportunity throughout this Metroplex and the images that you captured were amazing. Um, one question that I um, see is what is your specialty area in terms of shoots? So I'm going to assume they're meaning like 
do you like to do babies? Do you like to do weddings? Kind of, do you have a sweet spot? So I always tell people I'm a portrait photographer. I take pictures of people, but I've also done, I've done maternity before. I'm not the best at shooting babies. So I'm not even going to commit to doing that because I know I wouldn't be able to do it well. I can mostly just do portraits. Sorry. Awesome. Um, Tyler asked the question of where do you find inspiration? Well, I genuinely love to meet people. And whenever I'm talking to someone, and I'm especially when I'm like talking to people about a photo shoot, I'll ask them questions about themselves. And because I, I am an artist, I study lots of paintings growing up. I like to take what I know about art and try to apply that in whatever I learn about the person and kind of mm. everybody's everybody's photo shoots are always unique to that particular person based off of what I've gathered when I'm talking mm. to them that's cool nice. awesome thank you so much let's give Kiana another thank round you. of applause amazing presentation everyone you guys are doing awesome I love wow. it all right, so next we have Miss Fredricia Overstreet. Hello. Hello, let me share my screen. Are you able to see my screen? Okay. Hi, my name is Fredricia Overstreet. I am the founder of Sassy Oils. And let's see. So Sassy Oils is a small black owned business founded by myself in October of 2015. In 2020, I decided to expand Sassy Oils and offer wholesale. The inspiration behind this was really um, just motivated by my seven-year-old daughter. She's really, really smart. She had already been helping me fill a lot of orders. So eventually I would like to expand the business and then um, kind of gift it to her or work with her to teach her more about entrepreneurship. So what are Sassy Oils? Um, Sassy Oils are for all home and car owners who desire for their home and cars to smell fresh and inviting. Our fragrance oils and electric lamps provide long lasting refreshing scents of your choice at very affordable prices. Um, with work, in working with Colette, I did kind of um, get down on my target audience and I realized that most of my customers are single women who have children um, they are working, like to smell good, like their homes, cars to smell fresh. So although those are my target audience, um, I, I believe that the scents are available for men, women, all ages, colors. There is not really any um, discrepancies there. Uh, in reg regards to competition, I would say Scentsy and Bath and Body Works are competitors. Um, one of the things that I feel Sassy Oils has an upper hand on is that we don't use any type of fire. There's no candle lighting. These lamps are just electric lamps. Um, of course, they do have glass, so we advise to keep it out of reach of children. And then you just pour a little oil into your glass lamp. The lamps can be reused. You may have to change the light bulb, but those are offered at affordable prices. You can change the oils in and out and they don't leave a big mess like the wax does. We also offer fresh fragrances. They're non-toxic ingredients. Again, our lamps are electric, no fire is involved. And these oils last a really, really long time. Sassy Oils eliminates all home office and car or odors while providing business opportunities for young entrepreneurs worldwide. So I would like my business to expand worldwide. I started off in Lubbock, Texas, and I kind of just have um, grown my business from repeat customers, word of mouth. Last year, when um, my daughter started helping me fulfill some of the orders as the business grew, we talked about expanding it for other young entrepreneurs to start wholesaling. And so that has been up and down. I would like to see that grow more, but it's been exciting. It's been a good journey, learning opportunity for me and my daughter also. 
And so behind the scenes, I have me as the founder and then my daughter as co-founder. Level Up has been a really eye opener for me. I think one of my biggest challenges has been um, trying to balance being a mom, being um, working full time. I started a new job and so it's been really demanding. But I realized through this program that when you really want something, you're gonna have to dedicate your time. You're gonna have to be more consistent. You're gonna have to love what you do, know why you're doing it and giving it your all. So I really, really appreciate this program. I'm grateful to have uh, went through it. I'm glad that I made it to week six cause I was like, I'm not gonna make it, <laughs> but I made it through. Um, I've enjoyed my cohort, listening to some of your stories. I definitely plan to support. I think I've reached out to at least two of you already to try and start networking, but I also want to grow my business and learn more things from you guys and see how we can help each other out. And that is my presentation. This is my website, www.sassyoil.com. And I would encourage everyone to visit my website. You will not be disappointed. Good job, Patricia. That was an amazing presentation. Thank you so much for sharing. And I love the colors, purple. That is That's awesome. my daughter's favorite color. <laughs> Mine too. Girl after my own heart. I love it. I love it. All right. Amazing presentation. So questions. Um, there is a comment in the chat just says kudos for staying committed. Yes, because we know that entrepreneurship can be a drag, especially when you add things like assignments to it. So um, I applaud all of you guys um, for, you know, hanging in there and staying the course, because that's really what entrepreneurship is all about. Question from our uh, streaming audience. What is your favorite fragrance that you like to make? My favorite fragrance would be Downy. My top seller is actually Gain. Nice. I use Gain. I like Gain. So I'm going to have to hit you up. <laughs> that's pretty good. I use Gain. All right. How do you determine whether a client is retail versus wholesale? So um, I'm actually working with Colette on that. Right now I have wholesale packages. And so I do like a consultation with the wholesale package. And then retail, of course, they're only ordering by the bottle or by the lamp instead of ordering in the wholesale bundle. Awesome. Great. And what is the threshold to accessing wholesale rates? Um, I honestly don't know right now. It's just been um, a huge struggle and juggle trying to come up with the appropriate rate to where I will make profit and then also the wholesaler could make profit trying to decrease, um, you know, how much I'm spending per each oil. So it's just something that I'm working on. Okay. And, you know, kudos to you for saying you're not real sure because you know what? It'll come. So <laughs> congratulations and great job on an awesome presentation. Let's give Miss Patricia another round of applause. All right. That moves us to Mrs. Coral Simpkin. Hello, everyone. Let me share my screen. All right. So, hello. I am Coral Simpkins Mims, the owner of Coco Media. And I'm just going to start with a little quick about me. I am the wife to this handsome gentleman that you see pictured here and the mother to two lovely daughters. Um, I also hold a bachelor's degree in media communications from Full Sail University. I currently work full-time doing special events, marketing, and community outreach at UTA. And from time to time, I do work as a contract producer um, 
for the community impact team at NBC. Um, so about my business, Coco Media connects small businesses to their perfect customer. And we do that through strategic marketing plans, web design, and corporate event planning. And so kind of how I started on this journey, um, as a kid and kind of growing up, I was kind of the go-to person for anything kind of computer related, graphics, flyers, um, for family and for school events and those types of things. So I've always kind of had an interest in doing kind of media and design type things. So um, I eventually went back to school, got a degree in that. Um, and since I've been doing it full time for a university, I just kind of felt like I'd have a better impact at doing it for myself and helping other small businesses that need direction and help with marketing and connecting with their customers. And so through my research, um, these are some of the top reasons that small businesses fail. Um, but for my presentation, I'm going to focus on the last two uh, because they're directly related to my business um, and so because i am a small business owner i feel like i kind of understand some of the challenges that businesses face and so uh, when we talk about number three which is ineffective business planning many times people start businesses without understanding who their competition or their market are and so in the end um, their businesses failed because they weren't connecting with the customers that were likely to shop or do business with them. And so I'm here to um, help businesses do that research if they haven't done it already, or maybe they're looking to grow their business and take it in another direction. Um, and so I help them with building those marketing plans and strategizing to figure out what's the best option. And then when we talk about number four, which is marketing mishaps, um, kind of the same thing. Sometimes people don't understand who the market is or where those people are and how to connect with them. So um, I can help a business look at what they're currently doing with their marketing and determine if there's a better plan or if they need to maybe consider another outlet or another strategy with reaching the customers that they want to connect with. And then when we kind of talk about websites, 30% um, of consumers won't consider a business that doesn't have a website. Um, these days, everyone has a cell phone and access to Google. So if you don't have a website or some type of online presence, nine times out of 10, a business isn't, I mean, a consumer isn't going to do business with you. They'll choose someone that does have a website. And so how I do my business. Um, Coco Media is a fully digital business. Um, my services can be purchased through Fiverr um, or directly through my website. I'm currently working on my social media following. Um, right now, I can be found on YouTube, LinkedIn, Instagram, and I'm connected to a lot of groups on Facebook that directly target um, small businesses locally. Um, so I'm able to try to connect and network with other small business owners in the area who are maybe looking for the services that I offer. And here's how you can contact me. Um, and while that's up, I'll just kind of talk about my experience and the Level Up program. Um, I've kind of had this business for a while, but I wasn't really taking it serious. I've kind of been working it on and off just because life happens and I was going through school and it was just other things that were taking precedent over this. And kind of during COVID, I kind of got into a slump and 
I just got to a place to where I finally just decided that in order for me to get the things I want, I'm going to have to put in the work to do. Um, and so a friend actually posted um, a message on Facebook that said, um, do any small business owners need money for their business? And so I just reached out to her and lo and behold, it was the Level Up program. And I barely... <laughs> got in but i am so thankful because it gave me the confidence that i needed to actually put in the work and do what i needed to do a lot of these things i knew um so it was confirmation for me to get me i needed to be and do what i needed to get for my business so i'm thankful for the program i'm thankful for all the information the coaching and definitely grateful for my buddies here in the cohort, um, hearing our stories and knowing that some of us have been in the same places and we're going through some of the same things and y'all came through this together and we pulled through. So I'm just happy for the experience and yeah, I'm thankful. And that's it, I'm done. <laughs> Awesome. All right. Round of applause for Miss Coral and Miss Coco Media. That is so awesome. So I don't know why, but I see Coral as like a really soft spoken, you know, kind of quiet person. And to know that she's like into like social media and marketing, it's like, oh, Okay, well, that is cool. So kudos to you, Miss Coral. Um, any questions, pop them in the chat box or feel free to come off your mute and ask away. Question from LinkedIn. How did you come up with the term Coco? So it's actually a play on my name and my grandmother's name. So my first name is Coral. My grandmother's name is Cordelia. So I put it together and made Coco. <laughs> nice. So I'm thinking like you and Miss Jenny, she got the bombs, you got the media, you guys can like have some kind of like synergy going there. That's tight. I like it. I like it. And I like the name Coco. Um, Charletta says she loves your website. So congratulations there. Another question that came in, what made you focus on media as a profession? Thank you. Um, like I kind of said, something I've always kind of did for family and friends and I've always kind of been that go-to person. Um, I also used to work for the school district and we had a really small team. And so anything that was kind of related to websites or um, when I started, we didn't have a huge social media presence. And so I was kind of tasked with that. I was the youngest in the office. Um, and so it's just kind of stuck with me really kind of all along my life. and. I just kind of made a decision if I'm going to do it, I might as well make money off of it. So. <laughs> this is true. This is definitely true. I like it. I like it. Um, so question, do you offer monthly packages for clients who need ongoing services? So, yes. So I offer a maintenance package. Um, so typically if you buy a website with me. Um, you can purchase the website alone um, or you, you can purchase the website initially. Usually once you purchase the website with me, I'll offer a package to um, do continuous service on like a yearly maintenance package is what I have. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Miss Coral. Another round of applause for Miss Coral. Thank you. So I don't know if you guys saw me kind of looking away, but um, I told you guys that I'm like down here, Dallas Startup Week, and they are so awesome. They've been coming in and they're like checking on me. They're like, are you good? Are you okay? Well, this one guy comes in and he's like, what are you doing? I'm like, Bruh, like I'm, I'm on, but 
gotta love them so they brought me this red bull remember i told you about some kind of spritzer looking thing i told them i don't drink so this is non-alcoholic but doesn't that look cool isn't that like that looks really good so i'm gonna be drinking it fyi um so um just wanted to put that disclaimer out there but fun times down here. So thank you so much again, Miss Coral. All right, Miss Carolyn, are you ready? Yes, I am. All right, well, let's get this party started for you. Um, I am going, give me just a second to pull up your presentation. If I can find it. So while I am pulling up your presentation, why don't you tell us who you are? I am Carolyn Hunter, owner of Empire One Commercial and Genitorial Cleaning Service. I was a CNA for hospice before the pandemic. I decided to go on, make it a full time with my cleaning service. Awesome. Thank you so much, Miss. Carolyn, okay. So tell us about your business. I am a residential and janitorial service for consumers that need my cleaning service. More like daycare, office, small office building, doctor's office that needs my service. All right. And what is the gap that you would say you are filling in today's market? Today, I am feeling a need of uh, time consuming and weekly, daily cleaning for the consumers for their needs. And how do you do that? I will, hold on. oh, my business is working with consumers, allies, and giving them a price concern amount time and give them a straight working to get the job done and finishing the service and getting the resale, retail by pay. Awesome. Okay. Why is your business important? Oh, um, to me, to to have a successful, stable line of resale, re, re what is resale, and support my ba basic needs to also help the clients maintain cleaning and orderliness while be using patience and cautionness. I'm trying oh. yeah, to... Uh... So let me ask you this. How do you reach your current customers? Mm. I, my business, I connect by alliance to give them a, sim, a similar price for their service and give them a timeline when the service will be pursued and when the service is in a day in a resale. So talk about how you make money in your company. Okay, if it's a five, if it's a three bedroom house, four hours, my price is 25. By weekly, it'd be 400. By monthly, it'd be 1600. All right. And what are your needs currently for your business? Mostly I am looking for a sort of small van that I can put my products and my equipment in where if I have a, say if I have a daycare and I need a lightly cleaning. So I have all my material like the papers and then cell phones and telephone. 
Okay. Are you open to, so like you have here, the vacuum, the floor signs, the step ladders, are you open to people providing those things as like a, a seed donation to your business? Yes, yes. Awesome. Okay, so what did you gain from participating in the Level Up program? Okay, I have gained the knowledge to pathway my business and to be successful, successful in my business with a real retail, retail with the tools and the process from helping the teaching, the training, and will make my business successful. All right. So Miss Carolyn told me some pretty good news. Um, you want to share that good news? <laughs> Uh, next week, my niece is opening a daycare, and uh, she's going to be needing a, a janitorial service. So I will be going in next week and um, kind of giving her an estimate of a deep cleaning for her daycare. Woohoo! Look at you get clients and all that, girl! All right, I see you. <laughs> okay. Um, anything else you want to say about the program or your business? Uh, the program helped me a lot to do with finance and marketing. That was my first, well, that was my downfall. I did a lot of research and it did help. And I appreciate it for all the information that they gave y'all gave me in the level up program to give me a chance to go ahead and start my business successfully all right let's give it up for miss carolyn <laughs> great presentation great job and congratulations on everything that's happening in your business i have a question that came in Excuse me. I'm sorry. My, my little Red Bull drink. Um, I apologize for that. The question that came in is, how many offices do you plan to take on getting started? Uh, right now, it's just going to be me. And then um, probably another year or so, I may get two or three. But right now, I have to kind of once the office I get, how many people I need, do I need to transfer, uh, travel a lot? That's what I don't want because if you travel a lot, that's going to cost you. Or you can't make it on the time that the, uh, the client or the consumer wants. So try to make a like a map. If I have one, that's fine. If I can get another one, probably one or two that I'm going to start off right now. Okay. That's really good. Good to keep it at a pace. Don't let anybody pressure you into trying to, you know, rush it. Like this is your thing. So that is very wise of you um, to take it slow and know what's best for you. Great job. Other questions for Ms. Carolyn. So Ms. Carolyn, take a look at the chat. You got all types of kudos and congratulations <laughs> in that chat box. Um, any other questions for Miss Carolyn? All right, well, let's give Miss Carolyn another round of applause. Oh, sorry, one question just came in. How far are you willing to travel for your cleaning services? Right now, I would say in Fort Worth is, um, is the, if, I'm traveling, if I go to Fort Worth, I may go to Allerton. Then if it's a little more, I will go to Dallas. So, but right now, start off, I would just stay in Fort Worth. Awesome, sounds great. All right, Miss Carolyn, thank you so much. And last but certainly not least, we have Miss Opal Foster who is under the weather, but she decided to stick it on out and join us to do her final presentation. Miss Opal, are you ready? Yes, I am. 
I am. I won't be sharing my PowerPoint presentation um, just because I'm going to try to get through this, but um, I am Opulence Foster with Crafty Prince. Um, who I am is a um, company that commemorates um, memories. So for instance, I captured, I have a lot of clientele that um, is looking like for t-shirts and mugs and masks and things like that. So I work on that. Um, let me see where else I'm at. Um, again, my business is a print company or print service, um, primarily focusing right now on the t-shirt production as well as masks. Um, we also have done some hoodies and sweatsuits as well. So um, I market based on what the, what the customer has requested or ordered. Um, and then I make my sales or future dealings with my customers based on that. Um, um, what I do, so I started my business in last year, actually June of uh, 2020, I was wanting, I set out to make my data cowboy stuff for Father's Day. Um, and then it just kind of grew a, I guess a leg of its own. Um, and then I started to venture out into um, the t-shirts. Me and my children had made some masks as well that they wanted to sell. So those kind of were, were pretty popular. So then I started um, producing the masks. Some of, um, well, I guess how I operate my business right now, everything is done uh, through social media um, and word of mouth. So my, the people that decide to order with me have either, either seen my work on social media or mm -hmm. they have been told um they have been told about it uh through someone that has used utilized my services um, um how my clients are able to reach me again is through social media by my cell phone um or like i said if it's a referral um which i find that it's mainly what keeps the business kind of going. Um, how I make money is just by charging for those services that I've provided to um, the client, uh, depending on what it is that they're ordering. So I do have an order form that I've just rolled out um, in which I have them fill out to specify what it is they want, color, um, glitter, all of those things, which are additional, um, allows me to keep a better track of um, you know, the money that I've made for that previous month. What I've learned here in this program is that uh, um, you definitely have to do your research. So I think for myself, I had to take a step back because I had not um, thought about the business aspect of it. I mainly was just trying to make some money. So this program has definitely forced me to kind of take a look at uh, my, my reason why um, to and also to, I guess, confirm or, you know, to make a determination on whether or not it's going to be profitable long term or if it's just something that I could use to get by now. So I'm very appreciative of that. Um, I'm trying to think, y'all. I'm sorry. I have like scatterbrain. I have. It's crazy. Um, so that's that's pretty much it. Because I, I, I will get lost in my. Um, just to let y'all know, I was diagnosed with COVID on Thursday is when I got my first official. And then um, Friday, I got a second test. And everything that they say about like cloudy brain, that is for real. So that's, that's pretty much it, y'all. Well, thank you so much for getting on and, um, you know, doing your presentation. Tell the name of your business one more time. It's, uh, excuse me, it's called Crafty Prints. So Crafty Prints. Ms. Yes. Opal, if you won't do Q&A because we definitely want you to save your energy and, you know, get some rest. You did an awesome job. We hope you feel better. Definitely praying for healing for you uh, for sure. So let's give Opal a round of applause on an amazing presentation. Um, but we will be sure to put her 
um, business information in the posts that go out. So, you know, you guys can support her business as well. All right, guys, so we did it. You guys have officially completed your Level Up Business Program. So let's give everyone, yay! Like, I threw confetti for you guys. It's a party over here for sure. Thank you guys so much for being a part, sticking it out, completing all of it. I know it was tough. We had some moments. And yes, guess what? You're here and you did it. So guess what? That means that that business that you are pursuing and you are starting, if you get to one of those points where you're like, oh, I want to give up, just think back to the level up program, how you wanted to give up, how you didn't want to log on on that Monday, how you didn't want to do that presentation. And guess what? You made it to week six and you did it. So put that thought in your head and go for it. Now, one thing I did not do um, during the introductions because I wanted to save it for the end, I want to acknowledge our summer program coordinator, Miss Jennifer Lopez, who joined us from the DISD school district. She handled everything for you guys this summer. So want to give her an opportunity to introduce herself and want to give her my greatest, greatest, greatest appreciation because she was a rock star. So Miss Jennifer, you want to tell everyone who you are and about your future plans and all that kind of cool stuff? Um, hello, everyone. My name is Jennifer Lopez. And like she said, I'm going to be a senior at the School of Business Management at Townview. And my future goals, well, I'm currently thinking of applying to UT Austin and probably majoring in accounting or something in biomedical engineering, because those are two of my passions. And I'm really grateful for the opportunity that Teresa has given me over the summer and being able to see how the cohort members have, what's it called, been preparing themselves for this moment. Thank you. So Jennifer leaves me on Friday, so I am sad. Um, she gets to go back to, you know, prepare for school and all that. So I just wanted to say a special thank you to her for coming in and working with us this summer. And I completely handed her the Level Up program for her to coordinate, and for her to kind of lead. So um if you guys could just show her some love because she hit it out of the park. So thank you so much, Jennifer, for all your efforts that you did for us um, over at the North Texas Entrepreneur Training Center. Um, well, guys, that brings us to a close. Stay tuned to your email because there are some additional um, notes and things that will come out from us and some culminating things um, for you to be aware of. But I just want to thank you for spending your Monday evenings with me. And as always, if there's any questions that I can answer for you, any connections or resources that you need, please let me know. And guess what? Please stay connected because there are entrepreneurs that need your services as well. So thank you guys so much. I'm going to give Ocelia the floor to see if she has any closing remarks. All right. Well, thank you, Darlisa. See, CEOs, you did it. <laughs> there was quite a bit of anxiety about tonight, but you did it. But um, excellent job. It, as I said at the beginning, it's been terrific to see you come in and where your businesses were when you first joined the program to now. Some of the things that you have fleshed out about your business, some of those future plans that you have put in place that you didn't have before. It's beautiful every time we do this to see the growth. Uh, so we will be in touch. Uh, there are other community resources uh, that we'll continue to make sure that you get connected to because this is just one resource. We're just one program. Center for Transforming Lives is just one organization. Um, and there is a community 
of community business organizations to help you flourish as an entrepreneur here in Tarrant County. So uh, that's all I have. I don't know if Charlotte Cher has any comments, anyone else, but that is all I have for tonight. Charlotte Cher, do you have anything? Great job, entrepreneurs. Um, again, thank you for trusting us and um, Darlisa and Colette um, with your vision because it's, I'm sure it's like your baby and everyone doesn't need to be able to nurture or um, be able to even know about what you have planned for it. So thank you for trusting us and um, we hope that we can continue to be a resource for you and that we also have helped empower you and give you the confidence um, to take advantage of other resources in the community because there are a lot of other resources to help entrepreneurs and sometimes you can be intimidated from taking advantage of them based on where you are but hopefully you have that confidence um, to take advantage of other resources and again know that will continue to be available to provide support. Congrats, congrats. Awesome. All right, guys. Thank you guys so much. That is all we have for you today. You, um, like I mentioned, stay tuned. You will receive some um, additional email information from us. And that being said, you guys, best of blessings and enjoy the rest of your week. Bye.